Hello again, everyone. Coney is here. This afternoon, we're flying from Tucson to Sierra Vista, Arizona. I'm flying a Cessna 208B Grand Caravan. We'll be flying at a flight level of 3,000 feet. It's going to be a pretty short flight. Uh, looks like 43 nautical miles, so maybe 20 minutes or something. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Take off the parking brake. something on the runway or something. Alright, here we go. Flaps up. So, gain some altitude. And then I'll hand it over to the autopilot. Tucson Tower KH two nine three continue for south departure. Getting a little off course here. Let's steer back into the flight plan. Okay, I should watch my meters on the right side. I'm overheating the engine. It looks like a little bit. So pull back on the throttle. So I think I can turn it over. Alright, let's give it a chance to do what it's going to do. What I'm noticing is I was actually going backwards, so I should have been going the other direction. Wow, that river down there is beautiful. Um, that's kind of funny. I've done that before. I guess I get confused by the direction of the arrow. Tucson Tower KH two nine er tree frequency change. Anyway, Tucson autopilot approach should take care of that. KH two nine er tree is type Cessna caravan two miles northwest of Tucson four thousand eight hundred feet. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. Thanks to hey, the co-pilot for handling all the radio traffic. Okay, let's see if after the patch, Quark autopilot tree, does a little less oscillation. It seems like when I first started playing with autopilot, it was pretty steady. Maybe that was, you know, unrealistic. Alright, so now we're getting cleared through the Charlie Airspace KH two nine tree. And leveling up. So it will probably oscillate a little bit, but it'll it'll settle in. I suppose there's a way I can actually help it without getting on a pilot to disengage. It's pretty close. I'm going to go ahead and go outside now that it's successfully taken over. Over throttling the engine again. We pull back on that. Um, we're a lot higher than I had planned to go. I was trying to do 3,000 and I didn't pay attention to altitude while dealing with all the other stuff. So I am going to slow down a little bit already got the 3000 set so I can go turn flight level change on, let the plane do its thing, drop throttle, let it speed up and descend. Alright, so let's look around here a little bit. So I have to remember with the Xbox Three, uh, the Xbox One control to go left on the joystick to look right. The opposite when you're inside the cat. <coughs> Sorry about that. Something happened. I 
love the reflections off the plane and the blaring sun. That's beautiful. Kind of like to go back and explore that waterway over there. Um, so the plane's stable, it's under control. Engine throttle is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the drone. And then we'll need to disconnect from the plane. This makes me laugh. Okay, and then we'll need to go faster. All right. So something could go wrong with the plane. I can always turn it over to co-pilot if need be. Let him take care of it. This way of looking around is so peaceful. Everything looks flat like a desert or an ancient lake bed or something. Okay, so here's the waterway. Looks like some kind of a snaking river or maybe it's a stream. Let's see if I can get the sun reflecting off of it. Alright, well that's interesting. It'd probably be prettier with the moon reflecting. Seems a little on the quiet side, but all you'd hear with the drone would be the propeller spinning and nothing else, so what's the point? So, looks like some industry here, some houses over there, mountains off in the distance look really pretty with the sunlight. This must be one of the major freeways down here. You know, the cars are just for decoration. They don't usually act rationally. You see them turn around and do weird things. So you're not supposed to really, it's not like watching GTA and seeing, you know, AI cars. It's, they're just decoration. Uh, I think it'd be impossible to see the plane from here, but I'm gonna go ahead and head us back to the plane. stuttering as it reloads probably a whole bunch of textures and stuff. Oh, that's interesting. It's changing in right before our eyes. Uh, I think this reset it so I'm connected to the plane, so I should be able to swing around and look around. Oh, oh no, actually, it's, it's right once you're in the drone, then it's right to the right, not left to the right. It feels a little less lonely with the propeller noise than when it was completely silent before. Look at the clear delineations between different satellite photographs. That's one of the things. What can you do? It's a little bit like the 3D geometry is floating off the ground or something. I think that's probably just an illusion. As I move around, it kind of seems like it moves differently. As if it's, you know, above the parallax. Alright, head back to the plane. Head back to the external view. Reset that, and let's just go back inside. That's not what I meant to do. What I wanted to do was go up and come back. I have to use the wheel to come back. And again, like I've said before, don't touch the left joystick on this 360, I mean the Xbox controller, because it will start controlling the plane. That's your flight stick. I got smart this time and set up illumination properly for this flight in case the sun went down. I don't think it's going to but uh, I don't want to be caught off guard with the 
Garmin uh, super bright and then none of the other stuff being able to be seen. So I switched on, you know, just all, all the lights a little bit of overhead. Okay, the yoke just moved because I accidentally hit the left stick. If I do that too much, it'll probably kick it out of autopilot. Uh, it didn't really seem to affect the pitch of the plane. I'm trying to decide whether to do my own version of an autopilot tutorial. I wouldn't be able to do an expert, you know, thorough, advanced kind of tutorial, but maybe I can do a simple, quick guide to get into the plane, set up the autopilot, and then you can spend most of your time just looking around and whatever you want to do. Oh, see, I did it again. I gotta, <laughs> gotta get my thumb off the left stick or it's gonna cause problems. Um, what I haven't tried yet is flying with the controller instead of the flight stick. Um, it's really overly sensitive right now. Uh, I mean, it was just a little push on the joystick that caused the yoke to move that much. So um, I'd have to play around with the sensitivity. I don't think the sun's going to go down. Let's go back outside again. Alright, and it goes left to the right. Yeah, we'll land before it goes down. I can only record these videos when I'm not, you know, working or whatever, and so it's a little hard during the week to get anything that's fully during the day. I like to record in real time, real weather, for my learning to fly tour. It just seems like a nice, pure thing to do. For my tour flights, I will just set up to, you know, midday, clear blue. But my plan is to go counterclockwise around the country and then head back uh, to where I started in you know, Concord, Buchanan Field in Concord, California. I don't know how long it'll take. It's probably going to be hundreds of flights, maybe? I don't know. I don't care how long. I think by the time I'm done, I'll probably be bored with the game <laughs> and maybe needing a more of a challenge. But it seems like a fun thing to do. And most of these places I've never seen before, so I'm really curious what artificial representation of them looks like. I think it would be really interesting to see. You should check out my Grand Canyon tour video if you haven't seen it. It's very good. Are those cows down there? I don't remember if I can zoom in with the... Yeah, I can. Oh, they're houses. So I don't know if I have yet to see animals or flocks of birds or whatever. Uh, they're supposed to exist in the game. I think I have them turned on, but uh, maybe even at maximum capacity, but I've never seen a bird or anything. I'm thinking about moving up to another plane. I, I love this plane, but it's... Um, Pretty easy to fly, and I'm thinking I should push a little further. I'm not ready to switch up to a jet yet, um, but I'm trying different planes. I've tried a Beechcraft, and um, it could actually go, I don't know, 250 knots, and so that might be kind of fun to speed around. It was smaller than the Grand Caravan. I forget the model, but um, it would be nice to have a faster plane so you give me something that's continuing to increase my challenge so I have to, you know, get better at learning. I learn best by example and by doing, I suppose I could take an online flight school or something, but... Um, and I'm really curious to do that, but I may not. It's a lot of time. It's a big investment versus playing a game and, you know, faking it till you make it. I've always flown in video games. I understand the basic concepts, but there were a lot of things that I knew I didn't know I didn't know when I started playing this game, and I learned quickly. Um, and some of the steering and other move movements, like steering and staying at the same altitude, started to become a little natural, a little bit automatic. I don't have to quite choreograph it as much. Landing still require a lot of care. Um, and it's hard for me to keep the plane nice and easy and stable while trying to slow down and everything. So that's an area I'm working on. Uh, 
would get worse if I was carrying passengers on a real plane or something. It would be very uncomfortable landing every time. Alright, so we're still at this high altitude. I thought that we were going to descend. So let me see what's going on with that. Uh, flight level control. Let's see, where is that button? Right here. Is it on? It is on. Okay. The problem may be that I need to increase the airspeed for it to be able to descend. need to descend quickly because we're coming right up on the airport. Seems like it's 20 knots, 20 nautical miles away, but it's really only a few minutes away. I mean, we're going at almost three times freeway speed, I guess, well, double, two and a half times freeway speed. Pitch is oscillating a little bit, but that's typical when you're doing the flight level changes. It's trying to balance engine speed, pitch, all that and keep the plane going in the right direction and level. I would like to drop a little faster, so let's bring this up. Alright. I don't think we have a problem with these mountains. If so, we'll deal with it. Of course, I'm not taking into account that we're already above sea level, and so I'm starting to think the altitude is wrong. And we're going to hit something if we don't actually go back up. Yeah, we're, yeah these mountains are becoming a problem. So we're going to have to pitch up and get over these. Fighting with the autopilot. I'm surprised it hasn't disengaged. Okay, there we go. It should have disengaged. There's probably something I can do. Albuquerque Center KH two nine three six thousand feet. A turn or something that will cause it to quickly disengage. I'll have to find out about that. I love those late afternoon. Sunsetty shadows you get flying. All right, so I think we uh, I think we made it up over those mountains. Um, yeah, I forget that we already started at I don't know some number of thousands of feet up above sea level. So my three thousand feet was never going to work. We're going a little on the slow side, but I'm okay with that because I often try to land and I'm going too fast and I have a hard time burning off the speed, so I don't mind going a little on the slow side. Once I see the landing pattern show up on the screen after the co-pilot talks to the tower, I will put the flaps down, lower the throttle, and we'll start the landing approach. We'll look outside for a minute while we wait for that. So yeah, I really did need to lift up over those mountains. They were a lot closer than I was expecting. I didn't realize that they were that close. Uh, the plane's powerful though, it didn't have any problem. That Beechcraft I flew, I think it was a dual prop, dual engine, so this part explains why it was so fast. Alright, now we're going fast. I'd like to slow that down. Alright, so I'm going to go back inside. I've decided to do all my flying inside the cockpit, and just when I go outside, it's for looking around, not for flying the plane. Do you need to slow down, though? And what's our altitude? Our altitude's probably... Fine. I don't know. We'll see. We'll have time to change before we get to the landing pattern entrance. Uh, 
Levy Tower KH 29 er tree is 1 1 miles northwest with Oscar to land. KH 29 er tree, Levy Tower. Make right traffic, runway 26. Altimeter, 29 decimal minor, 2 wind 260 and tree. Enter right traffic, runway 26 KH 29 er tree. Here we go. Alright, so that's exactly where we need it to be. Let's go ahead and put the flaps down lower the throttle. Well, the throttle's already pretty low, so let's uh, push on the stick to keep us from gaining too much altitude while we slow down. Bring the throttle back up so we don't stall, and we should be good. So it wants us to go below 80, maybe below 85. And, then, and I, in case you didn't know, I, I can tell because of the color of the, the landing pattern. Maybe that was obvious. All right, well, we can afford to look outside for a minute while we head towards the entrance. We do have to control the plane. Automatic control, and I'm not going to turn over the landing to the co-pilot because I'm not going to learn that way. Um, I can use the hat to look around a little bit. That's a nice move. Tell him rolling a little bit. thrust a little bit. We're heading to kind of down on the low end of that white line. And I want to have some headroom. I think our altitude is okay. In fact, maybe I can drop down a bit, gain some speed that way. I'm using both hands on the stick when I do this to try to keep things stable and, and rational. Um, but I really would like to get a yoke. I just got a bonus at work, maybe I should spend it on the yoke. If you could find them. I don't know if they're, you know, going to find them like crazy. But they've run out like toilet paper. Okay, I moved the throttle up a little bit. I moved to the center detent on the throttle stick. Speed is good. And everything's stable. The wind's obviously calm. I'm not 100% sure if I actually chose live weather or not. I might have left it uh, set the other way. Yeah, I think I let it set to clear weather. That's okay but um, I forgot to change it to live before flying. I don't know what the weather's actually like. I might be able to find out. Um, oh, okay, no, that's not gonna work. <laughs> um, I mean, would, I was planning on a nighttime flight, but uh, that's just too much of a burden on my eyes to change that quickly. Okay, well that was fun for a second. I mean, if you really want to have fun, you go in and you turn on massive storms and snow and all that kind of stuff. It's, you, do, you know, you get white out, you can't see anything. It can actually be a lot of fun. I won't do it now. Maybe sometime I'll make a crazy video and do some stuff like that. Try a bunch of weird things. That'd be kind of fun. All right, so here we go, getting into the pattern. We're a little on the high side, but that's okay. I'm going to drop throttle a bit because I do want to slow down. So it looks like it's going to be below 85 for this segment of the landing pattern. That's good. And I, the reason I say that is I went above 80 and it's still blue. So, oh, there we go. So it's maybe above 82.5, but it, it's too fast. Drop the throttle a bit more to try to burn off some speed. 
can do to burn off speed, like uh, serpentining back and forth, use the turning to burn off some of that potential energy. Yeah, I don't typically ever see planes doing that, I guess you know, if you're a bad pilot like me, you probably do something like that. Okay, here's dropping speed, I'm going to give it some more thrust. I wouldn't, stay, I wouldn't mind staying in the low 70s, um, and in fact, Final parts of the landing pattern want us to be uh, below 70 or 75. Or something. Right, more thrust because we're getting too close to the bottom of that white line where the flat lift cuts off and we stall. kind of um, descended and lost a lot of that potential energy in our height. I think this is going to be a bit of a sharp turn, but we don't have to make it perfectly. We can just turn it. Maybe it's not that tight. It's a little hard sometimes to judge where these brackets are three-dimensionally, but this actually looks like it's a, you know, it's a little tight, but it's not as tight as I thought it was. I'm going to drop the throttle just a little bit. I'm going to focus on getting engine speed a little lower, because we're going to have to have it soon at zero. So, and by engine speed, I mean air speed. Another turn, okay, that's fine. That's part of what makes it hard to judge where the brackets are. And I can keep the throttle down, we can keep descending to keep our speed good. We're going a little fast. Um, hopefully we'll drop speed as we go through this turn, we get down to a reasonable speed. Okay, the bracket is turned blue, so that seems good. All right, so now the goal is to stay below 70 and above the white line and not stall the plane, but almost stall the plane, and then land at the last minute, ultimately stalling the plane. I give it some thrust because we're getting a close to that line, and I can probably do this a lot more smoothly, but it's a little hard to do multiple things at the same time. That's where practice is going to come in. Alright, well this seems very comfortable. Again, I forgot to set it to live weather, so it's you know, clear, perfect weather. Um, midday, that's fine. It's actually, I don't know, here it's probably 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. I feel like my angle's a little high. What I'd like to do is just go in steeper and try to float as long as possible before actually touching the ground. It's giving us the landing pattern again. I guess in case we do a touch and go, I need to go back in. But I think we're going to be fine. The suspension speed's fine. We're stalling now, but that's okay because that's what we needed. Alright, not bouncy at all, that was great. Uh, but we need to put the flaps up, and we've got a lot of speed that we have to burn off here. I always forget to put the flaps up when I land, but if you don't do that, you start hitting the ground. I mean, you start uh, hitting the air, I guess. Hey, Alright, so. We'll pull over and stop here. Okay. And we'll set the parking brake for a minute. One and two, one decimal seven for KH two he'll switch the radio for me, but I need to go actually contact ground. And request taxi to park. 
So another practice item for me is to go slow while taxiing. I always end up going too fast. Uh, I'm supposed to keep it 20 knots or below, so I'm going to focus on being patient and going slow. Um, I think one of the reasons I'm not a real pilot, as much as I love the idea of being a pilot, is I'm not very patient. So, uh, maybe that's another area of learning in the game, is some patience. I'm not going too fast. Uh, I'm not applying any thrust other than the idle of the engine. Um, I think it's okay. You know, we're going 21, 22. That's not bad. We will have to stop and cross another runway, apparently. I'm steering with pedals. Uh, I don't use them at all during flight, and so I don't have to have my feet there the whole time. Um, I do need to use the rudder. I've got the flight stick. I can turn it and it will do the rudder function. But I'm trying to avoid that and use the pedals so it's a better learning experience. I'm going to slow down just a little because I don't like how fast we're going. And I do not want to accidentally take off. Unlikely, but you know, a gust of wind could come along and suddenly we're flipped over. Or something. I think I was. <laughs> I was probably supposed to stop maybe before crossing that runway and look and make sure there wasn't a plane about to land. Oh well. Do that next time. <laughs> um, anyway. The scenery is beautiful, it's very flat. I like the mountains off in the background. Another runway that I probably should have looked. <laughs> it's alright. It was a long day, so I'm allowed. Okay, we're going a little fast. It's going to make it hard to make that turn, so I'm going to slow down. Bring up the pedals again. With the left pedal, and then turn also, and I can make a nice, sharp, slowing down turn and pivot on that left wheel. Keep us going for a while. Now, I also don't have my graphics set all the way high like I usually do. I used the NVIDIA Optimize for game. Um, I think it could be set higher. It doesn't look like it's as detailed as I'm used to. So I'll probably go back in and set it above Ultra again. Seems to be fine at uh, 1080p to do that. Um, in 4K, though, you know, the, uh, I've had the game lock up with everything on Ultra in 4K, so my card can't quite handle that. And so in opposite case, pivot on the right wheel. There we go. And it's a little weird to do that because you have to both do something towards the right and do something towards the left at the same time, and it can be kind of confusing. Um, it's like seeing those planes. It's kind of too bad you can't actually get out of the plane and walk around and just look around if you want. That would be a nice thing. Okay, this is another place where I often go too fast. Let's see if I can just coast right in. This looks like a beautiful entrance into the parking spot. Alright, and we're parked. Set the parking brake, dethrottle, turn off the engine. And once that spins down, turn off the plane. It looks pretty empty in out in the middle of nowhere out here in Sierra Vista, Arizona. 
Alright, so the engine's off. Master switch is right here. And there we go. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.